Well done, Jane. Three cheers for the Hooray! 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 Come and join us. Don't take anybody's hand with that. Now for the painful bit, Richard. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you, Richard. Turn it down. You have a nice picture of Richard with a check. A check. Yes, very lucky to get that. We're very lucky. You'll hear why I know. Okay, hello everybody, I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, right, I'll just read out what I've got here and tell you a little story. It's uh, amused me anyhow, and it's partly why Michael persuaded me to part with some money. Uh, a few months ago, Michael and I were potting steam trains in France, and we got to talking about the bloomer, whose progress I've been following in the railway for us. I then told Michael a story about my family from the London and North Western Railway. Michael said, Richard, you should become a donor. Come to Tysley and tell your story. Uh, yeah, well, of course, I couldn't resist that, so here we go. Family history research is a big thing these days. Actually, it's bigger than Gricey, uh, dare I say it. In the course of investigating my 19th century relatives, I came across something I was really surprised about. I'd never heard of it before. One of my great-great-grandfathers, can't work that out, it means he was my grandfather's grandfather. One of my great-great-grandfathers was the last chairman of the London and Birmingham Railway and was elected first chairman of the London North Western Railway in 1846. And his name was George Carr Glynn. We have him here today on my left. <laughs> to diverge briefly, it was during his chairmanship that McConnell introduced the first bloomers in 1851. Built at Bulberton Works, and Carl Glynn, and later on, Carl Glynn, being a sort of successful bloke, got himself a title. And it's, it's when he, he chose the title Baron Wolverton, which I think is brilliant. I mean, there are not many people who, when they get into the House of Lords, choose the name of a railway firm. Closer for my mouth. Sorry, okay. Well, I'm going to have to do that again. The story first appeared in the Times in 1938, just after the LMS Centenary issue, and explained how the London and North Western Railway got its new name in 1846. Apparently, a vexed Carl Glynn came home from the first board meeting of the amalgamated companies, complaining to his wife how the former directors of the London and Birmingham Railway and the Manchester and Birmingham Railway could not agree on a name for the new company. To call it the London, Birmingham and Manchester was agreed to be too long. Manchester thought the new line should be the London and Manchester, but Birmingham objected strongly, and the meeting was finally adjourned. Mrs. Carglin, and I can just hear her saying it, said, why not leave out all the other towns and just call it the London and North Western Railway, dear? Anyway, Carglin was delighted with his feminine clarification and the name was duly adopted and the London North Western has gone down in history. So even in those unliberated times, the influence of a calm woman could make its mark on history, not to mention Amelia Bloomer and her clothing revolution. But that's it folks, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is the start part of the celebration. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here.
When, when this is finished, you can go and meet George and Robert Stevenson, our actors, who rock in, and we're going to start to put them on the platform in the next opportunity. So perhaps we've got to take a picture again. Oh, don't come out, Yeah. 